Whatever you feel like, it's. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's 9 o'clock on uh, July 6th. We'll call the McLeod County Board of Commissioners meeting to order. We'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, good morning, everyone. Um, consideration of agenda items. No changes, Mr. Chair. I'll move to approve the agenda. Uh, motion made by Commissioner Nagel and seconded by Commissioner Luthens. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda is approved. Um, or, I mean, the. Uh, the consideration of agenda items is approved. Consent agenda. Move to approve, Mr. Chair. Motion made by Commissioner Smalls. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lothens. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda is approved. COVID. Morning, Barrett. Good morning. Good morning. As of uh, last Friday, July 2nd, Paul County had a total of 4,324 active cases of COVID-19. Uh, at the last board meeting on July 15th, I reported 4,296 positive cases. Uh, so we've seen an increase of 28 cases in the last uh, two weeks. Unfortunately, McLeod County has um, had 61 COVID-related deaths since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, just a reminder to check our COVID-19 dashboard on the McLeod County website's homepage for more uh, statistics that is updated weekly at this time. Uh, for our uh, public health vaccination efforts, uh, we continue to provide vaccinations here at the McLeod County Government Center. Um, we have held 50 vaccination clinics to date and administered 5,060 first doses and 3,806 second doses for a total of 8,866 doses administered. We have one vaccination clinic scheduled for this week on Thursday, uh, July 8th from 9 to noon with uh, 20 appointments uh, available. Uh, we continue to vaccinate with Moderna, which is for those 18 and older. And again, check the McLeod County website for more information on our uh, vaccination clinics and how to register. Uh, for McLeod County, uh, as a total vaccination statistics, as of June 30th, 48% of people in McLeod County have received at least one uh, vaccination or one dose. Of the 12 plus population, 56% have received at least one dose. Of the 16 plus population, 59% have received at least one dose. And of the 65 plus population, 87% have received at least one dose. Any questions for me? I don't bear it on your uh, on your uh, data report. Is there this? There, there's talk, obviously, on the news and and people talking about this new uh, the variant. variant. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We don't. Um, we uh, when we participate in calls, we hear more about that variant, uh, but more about just the science of it. We don't. When we hear the numbers of positive cases, we don't know if uh, those positive cases are part of the variant or not. We're just re reported um, the positive cases. So, yeah, but we're well aware that, that uh, um, those variants are out there and they seem to spread more rapidly. Thank you. Thank you. Sheila. Good morning. So for my COVID-19 update, I'll just continue to talk about the American Rescue Plan funds that um, are coming through McLeod County, our townships and cities around us. We have been meeting as a coronavirus relief funds committee, still um, a budget committee, and of course the board meets as needed for these funds. We did receive our first tranche of funds, so that was $3,485,897. All county funds are received from the federal level, 
cities, are cities and townships are receiving their money from the state. Funds must be committed by December 31st, 2024. However, the recipients have until December 31st, 2026 to complete projects using the funds. So as we've been discussing, still not rushing, want to make sure that we understand all of the applicable uses of the funds before moving forward. Um, one big update is that we do not need to maintain a declaration of emergency relating to COVID-19 for these funds. Uh, McLeod County Board will review an end of the declaration for our county. I believe Kevin Matthews will talk about that with you next. Um, specific eligible use information from the U.S. Department of Treasury, it continues to be defined. We read the interim final ruling. Um, the most reliable updates are coming through the frequently asked questions section on the U.S. Department of Treasury website. So if you do have questions, they could probably be answered there or through us. That's all I have. All right, thank you, Edge. And I just uh, emphasize that we're, we're not in a rush. We're, we're interested in doing it right and not just rushing out the funds. Is that correct? Correct. And I should also add that to, you know that we've had this update now since the beginning of the pandemic, every meeting. Um, we do not plan to have this on every meeting any longer unless needed. So it will be added as needed or monthly, whatever is preferred by the board. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Kevin. You're in uh, in both COVID and you have your your next item. If you want to combine the two, that may as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a good transition. So that's one thing I was going to mention that um, unless the situation changes, uh, this will probably be my last uh, update to our board uh, as far as our COVID-19 response. Of course, you know it, it is still kind of ongoing and stuff with things. But as things kind of resume our new normalcy, we can kind of start scaling back some of our operations, and and that's what we're doing in emergency management as well. But we're still um, um, officially closed. Our EOC is a couple weeks ago. We met with the Health and Human Services COVID-19 um, team, um, and it, we decided that we're going to close our emergency operations officially, um, the center. So that's is something that we're not really physically meeting anymore. We're not doing a lot of activities that we did throughout this pandemic. However, we are still kind of in monitoring mode, and we will never, ever always officially close the EOC. Uh, we're always monitoring and, and seeing if we need to ramp up officially. So, um, so that is kind of ongoing. Uh, we're still kind of monitoring the situation, of course, as um, everybody else is and stuff. But we feel at this time also that it is uh, appropriate to uh, terminate our state of emergency that has been in existence since March 24th of 2020. So the county board um, back then declared a state of emergency uh, for the COVID-19 pandemic. And part of that in that um, um, Declaration states that uh, be it further resolved that the McLeod County Board consents to continuation of the local emergency until a passage of a termination resolution by the County Board. So um, with that, uh, we decided just to kind of close this, close this um, emergency out. So I do have a um, new resolution, new resolution 21 CB-23 to officially end our state of emergency for McLeod County. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Mr. Young, have you had a chance to review that resolution? Yes, I have. Uh, yes, I have. Mr. Matthews sent it to me, and, and it looks fine. I, I would recommend that you approve it. And it's good to see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is for me as well. I Mr. Just, Mr. Chair, I'd move to approve resolution 21 CB 23. Motion made by Commissioner Nagel. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Wright. Any more discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of uh, for a resolution 21 CB 23, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion happily carries. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Yep. Health and Human Services. Good morning again. I just have one um, item for you today. Uh, consider approving the request to continue the agreement for the transportation of children and youth in foster care placement between McLeod County and Glencoe Silver Lake School District 2859 from July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2023, uh, using funds from the Individual and Family Social Services Budget 11-430. So transportation services will be provided by the district for students who can be transported to school on an existing route and or for students who have an uh, IEP, an individualized education plan, indicating the need for specialized transportation. 
Uh, the school district in McLeod County agreed to split the cost of transportation, including but not limited to staff time and third party carriers as appropriate. Mileage reimbursement will be at the current IRS rate. Board? Mr. Chair? Go ahead. I would uh, move to approve the continuation agreement uh, as stated by uh, uh, Barrett. Motion made by Commissioner Smalls. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Luthens. Any more discussion? Hearing none, proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Sue Schultz. Oh, there she is. Good morning. Good morning. Nice so I'm here in, um, on a task court petition for Richard Peterson. Um, he and I met um, a, a month or so ago and went through his property. Um, we are recommending a reduction due to the condition of the building. The current value for the pay 21 is 225,500. And we are looking for an agreement for 178,900. And he is in agreement with that amount as well. Can I have the numbers once again? 225? 225,500. Um, to 178,900. So this motion, uh, we need to approve Mr. Young to be able to, this one of those again? Where we yeah, need you, you would uh, I'll approve this and agree that I would draw up the settlement and sign on your behalf. Yes. By the way, Mr. Peterson was the county attorney here in McLeod County back in the early 70s that i didn't know huh. hmm. i know that now this is uh, this is just for the period of that that year that's yes that, that's yeah just for this for pay 21 correct mr chair move to approve and that uh, we approve also mr young to uh to prepare the paperwork and sign on the board for that second motion made by commissioner Wright, seconded by commissioner nagel to approve uh, the settlement and uh, have Mr. Young uh, go through and, and make sure the paperwork is correct. Is there any more discussion? Why didn't we go through the regular channels here? We did. This is part of the regular channels. This is an option to the property owners that they can take any property that they own and file tax court petition. So this is just part of the process. If, if they, don't, they don't have to appeal at a local board of review, they can go straight to tax court. So he has filed an appeal in tax court and we have the choice of either trying to settle it or to try it. And Ms. Schultz met with him and felt that this was an appropriate settlement. Thank you. Any more discussion? Hearing none, proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you, Sue. Have a great day. Environmental services, Mark. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Good morning. Gentlemen, Sarah, if you want to come on up, I'll let Sarah handle this first item. We do have two items on the agenda today. The first one is for um, a new program for our HHW and our solid waste, um, referred to as Recollect. So I'll just let her take it from there. Good morning. Good morning. So this morning, um, we we are looking for uh, your approval uh, relative to a Recollect program. It is a it's a digital online tool that allows residents to um, search for information relative to recycling that's specific to their home address. So it's kind of like a search engine tool for any website. So if you go to Google, that's a search engine tool. So this is an embedded tool right into our website where they can enter their address and they can find out what day is their recycling day as well as their trash day. That's all information that we can enter into the background information. Uh, they can also um, search up events. So um, if they pull up their address, they can see that they have a curbside appliance and e-waste collection uh, coming to their neighborhood in the next 30 days. So we can schedule events onto that website tool as well. It also allows them the ability to do searches. So if they want to know what they can do with a garden hose, they can enter garden hose and it'll come up with 
um, how to dispose of that. Is that an item they can throw in the trash? Is it an item they can throw in the recycling? And where they can take it, um, if it's something that they cannot put in their trash or recycling. So it's a really great tool uh, that we can use on our webpage, as well as uh, a mobile app. So they can actually download the app onto their phone and search for those same things um, while they're on the go. The mobile app, which is really unique, is that you do not have to have a login. You do not have to have a username and password to get into that, that mobile app. Everything is address specific. So it's really easy for the residents to use and it's one less password that they have to try and remember. So it's a really great tool. So the Recollect program is um, the cost that we're looking at is about $8,200. It's a three-year contract. And uh, they went through the RFP process through Sourcewell, which is a cooperative purchasing uh, company. So uh, we're looking at working with them to set up this program. I have communicated with GIS so that they can start coordinating some of those address lists and um, start working on some of that background information. And IT has been notified as well and doesn't see any concerns with this program. So I'm opening it up to any questions that you may have about the, the software. Board of Christians for Sarah. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Are we, yeah, good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Are we replacing a program or are we, great, we, are we creating a new feature to uh, complement your services? This is a new tool, so this is not a replacement, it's a new tool. It's just to make the information um, easier for residents to access. Instead of having to call us or send us an email, they can actually enter their information right into this search tool. Um, so it makes it a lot easier, more convenient for them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, was there any? <clears throat> yeah, I um, had an opportunity to see the demonstration of, of this. I, I, I like the idea. Uh, it's a great education tool uh, to help to assist the people out there with making those choices. Do we throw it away or can it be recycled or what can I do with it? Um, I also see uh, savings in staff time on, on this particular item. Um, perhaps instead of the phone calls uh, that staff get, uh, these, they can very quickly, you know, some of these questions can be answered uh, within this, this program or a very easy to use app that they mentioned doesn't require <coughs> the passwords and so forth, which I think we were all getting kind of sick of that <laughs> in our, the current way of doing business. But, um, and you know, maybe we can even cut down on some of those residuals and maybe then we're recycling stream as well by being able to answer some of those questions very quickly and easily, what do I, what do, I do with this? Can I recycle it or do I have to throw it away? So um, I think this is a good investment. It's, it definitely helps out our, the service uh, goals uh, that we have through, through our program. So I'll make a motion to approve. Motion made by Commissioner Wright to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Smalls. Any discussion? We do have a little. I also agree with uh, Commissioner Wright. I think uh, I think it's more efficient. What I've learned in um, um, trying to work with recycling and do a better job, it takes it takes some time and it takes some getting used to. This gives uh, everything seems to be going to the cell phone, so that it's, it's easy access to find out and some of the few people that are making some illegal dumps, uh, for instance, in the dumpsters, they do want to do it right. So I, I, this gives them the opportunity to look out, look where they where they can actually put it. And uh, so with that, I mean, I had some, you guys shared it with me before and I, and I, I like the program. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. B. Yep, item B. Uh, item B is to consider approval for David and Kim Dickerson's request for a preliminary final plat in order to combine two lots currently known as Matson Southview, lots one and two, into one lot plat to be known as Dickens, Dickerson. So that is a correction based on what's printed there. It is Dickerson's edition. For the purpose of resale located in Section 8 of Rich Valley Township. The Rich Valley Township Board recommended approval for this request unanimously on June 8, 2021. On June 23, 2021, the Planning Advisory Commission recommended approval with the condition that uh, myself review soils reports for any contamination concerns. Um, with that being said, there was public present. Uh, there was a concern. There was a conditional use permit that was approved in 2014. There was a demolition landfill out there at one time, and there was concern in regards to contaminated soils. The purpose of that was to mine clay to be used in ditches and some road projects. With that being said, um, at that time, soil borings did indicate that some of the debris that was brought in in the 60s and 70s was down to about 20 feet. The soils 
and the water samples that were tested um, did show some high levels of toluide, which is a residue of plastic, as well as some arsenic. At that time, though, um, in 2006, when the original plat went through, they did put $1,000 into an account for future well testing, and that still currently sits in an account. So if somebody were to purchase and want to build out there, there is monies available set aside by the applicant at the time in 2006 for that well testing. So with that being said, um, that is why this is on the regular agenda. And upon staff review on 2028, there is, as I stated, 1,500 now in account. Um, uh, and that, so it's an interest-bearing account. Obviously, it's been generating some money. Confirmed by the, our county finance director, which will be used towards that testing. So with that being said, the planning commission did recommend approval. So um, it is here in front of you today. Uh, Mark, before we go into a motion, could you just, just for the record, spell it's, it's Dickerson? Just, but would Dickerson, you just spell so D-I-C-K-E-R-S-O-N. Thank you, and I apologize for the spelling here. Board? Seems pretty straightforward to me. I move to approve. Motion made by Commissioner Nagel. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Ludens. Uh, any more discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Public Works, John. Good morning. Good morning. One item for you today is to consider approving a quote we have from Subsurface Incorporated. They're out of Moorhead for culvert rehabilitation on one 100 foot culvert. It's a 24 inch CMP culvert up on County Road 4, northeast of Hutch. Uh, the estimated fee to line that culvert is $21,000. We've done this before with other, the same company and other culverts. It's a good way to replace or rehab these culverts. Actually, probably better than replacement. This culvert's a deep location too, otherwise we'd probably do it with our own forces, but it's fairly deep. And uh, when we look at what it would cost to, to dig that out and put a new one in, Compared to this lining, the lining is cheaper, so we'd like to recommend this quote. And you're happy with the what the product in the past? Yeah, they've turned out real well, and the liner itself, this um, this ultraviolet um, line thing, their seven year life, long life, so better than any culvert. Better flow characteristics as well. It'll, it's a smooth liner, smooth bottom, you know, just like fiberglass. So. Mr. Chair? Uh, who's going to be Mike? Just go ahead. Oh, question for John. Um, John, what's the failure of the of the culvert we have under there now? Is it age? Is it uh, it's just age. structural the bottom, integrity? The bottom is rusted out a little bit. Um, they're going to do an extension on just the far end of it to get it a little longer, but yeah, it's just <coughs> old. Old and rotted out in the bottom and everything. And a uh, follow-up question to that. Does the uh, cure-in-place treatment add to the structural integrity of the culvert yeah it's just as strong as a culvert if not stronger from everything that everything they've indicated yep my question was just going to be a uh, capacity it doesn't affect capacity doesn't at all i know capacity. i've heard that it flows that i heard the flow yeah really so with, with, with the increased flow um it'll it's the same capacity yep mr chair go ahead move to approve the request motion made by uh, commissioner smalls to recruit to approve the resurface of the culvert request. Is there a second? Second that. Second by Commissioner Wright. Any more discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we're running just a little bit ahead of the of our public hearing, so we can go to our calendars. We didn't get to them last week, so um, at least uh, whatever version we can get of our calendars for the last four weeks. Go ahead, Mr. Luthens. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll go back to the 15th commissioner's meeting. Um, the workshop we had um, following week, 22nd, had a Zoom meeting with um, Health and Human Services, 23rd, um, planning and zoning. In the following week, 29th, met with um, 
on Ditch 40, meeting with one of the persons on there, and then the next day, then the 30th, I walked, I walked the ditch for quite a ways, trying to figure it out. So that brought me up to today. Thank you. All right. Yet, uh, well, with um, several weeks of meetings, I'll just hit some of the highlights uh, scattered within there. I have different uh, budget meetings and some ditch issues. However, I uh, do need to highlight on the 8th of June, uh, we had uh, our final presentation by Janet Addy. Um, also on the 15th, I believe it was, uh, Commissioner Kruger and I traveled to Olivia uh, to take part in the, the JD15 hearing with Buffalo Creek Watershed. And I think if he wants to expand on that, he understands a lot more of, of that particular issue. <coughs> um, CRF meeting in there as well. Uh, and uh, um, also met with uh, state extension staff and county board members from Meeker County and Wright County on uh, perhaps in the future uh, doing some changes within the extension programming that we offer uh, and I believe that that is getting scheduled for a workshop on July 20th and how we can create kind of more of a, a tri-county presence which is um, uh, some interesting concepts uh, a little bit of a budget impact uh, but a lot of things we can gain from that but that's why we have done a workshop in a couple weeks and that's good enough for me all right um, I, I just want to confirm the economic development. Addie had a, a, your final presentation. I think that's important to note. Uh, things are a little moving a little slow, but I think in a, in a good direction. Um, we had a RAMC on the 9th uh, district meeting in, uh, in New Ulm. Um, uh, Sheila Murphy and, and Commissioner Schmals and I attended. Um, it, was, it was interesting. It's been it's our first face-to-face for a long time, so um, I, I would just say that it was pretty much a general meeting. That uh, the topic that interested me is what we can use our our ARPS money for going on. There were some new ideas there, and and um, so that's we're looking into that. I had had uh, some um, constituents uh, or activity with my car. I got a new road going past my place. It looks really great, but there's been some. It, it takes a little effort and patience to get it done. They, the guys work hard, did a, they're doing a great job, and there's some, some work there to go. Um, as Commissioner Wright uh, uh, had said, we had uh, a public hearing with Buffalo Creek Watershed on, on county, or on judicial ditches, 15 in Renville County, and that is the same as the Buffalo Creek. I, uh, I had my concerns about capacity, uh, as I still do. Um, but uh, a compromise that I worked out with um, with the commissioners in Renville County and hopefully to, to, to involve uh, Sibley and maybe Wright and Carver is to do some work on, <clears throat> on the Buffalo Creek uh, as far as engineering work. Where are the problem spots? Where can we store water? Um, I mean, it's, it's an issue that's not going to go away. Um, the channel possibly needs to be cleared somewhat. I mean, obviously it's public water, so it's not as easy as, as one of our ditches are or a private ditch. So, uh, but a commitment there is to, uh, is to work together and try to find the, the spots. I, uh, I guess uh, I hate to use the analogy, and I did use it that night. I mean, I'm, we're all, I'm already drowning. I've got a mile of creek, and, and I'm already, I've already got too much water in major water events. Um, so this project alone, I understand it. I understand what they wanted to do, what they're improving. There, the problem with me was it was an improvement and not a repair. Uh, I get it, but um, I guess this particular singular project didn't wouldn't matter. I'm already got what when, when the pail is full, it's full. Uh, it's just done. So uh, now is trying to uh, utilize prob possibly some of the ARPS money might be able to be earmarked and get an engineer's report on uh, on the Buffalo Creek and go and then we know where our problems are so I, I guess that's enough on that but um, any questions that people do have on that can they can contact me I don't I mean I'll tell I'll tell you what I do know and and uh, um, I, I am looking forward to to getting that study going um, 
uh, at Trailblazer up in Buffalo on the 17th, we uh, had a ribbon cutting for the new Trailblazer facility up there. It's a really nice facility. Obviously, it's 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 a uh, it's uh, like a brother to building to uh, to uh, Glencoe's, except it's quite a bit bigger uh, and houses a, a number of more buses. We had a good turnout, and, and the building looks looks good. Um, uh, I had a Mid-Minnesota Development Corporation annual meeting, which I attended uh, along with uh, Barrett Spores, is, is sitting on, uh, on Mid-Minnesota now, and I, and I appreciate her um, work, and I'm, I'm looking forward to her helping me on a lot of things I don't understand, so you gotta get your arms around. I also had an ATP, District 18 meeting, that's transportation, that's an appointment through Mid-Minnesota on uh, construction, um, happenings in, in our district. Um, I guess that brings us to today. I mean, we got some loose ends, but that's that's enough for today, Joe. And Mr. Chair, I'll just hit the high points too. Um, budget, uh, budget meetings, uh, personnel meetings, as always, some of those items will be addressed here later on in this meeting. Meeting with uh, constituents regarding our EDA um, uh, plans and, and they're pretty excited about what that means to, to the county. Health and Human Services meeting um, had some phone calls regarding some ditch issues, more um, how the payments were working and um, the equity regarding that. And I think it was just a misunderstanding, but I think we got that figured out. Uh, NACO public safety uh, phone calls and meetings were scheduled. Also had a meeting with the Southwest West Central director. Again, that's the committee that we uh, went on regarding, really regarding our insurance. Um, it's much, much more than that. And uh, I'm filling out that last year term and deciding whether it's best that we stay on it or we move in a different direction. Uh, met with the fairgrounds staff regarding some traffic flow issues. Uh, the exciting part is there's some traffic flow issues because it's pretty busy out there right now. So uh, dealt with that and I don't know, seems like a lot more, but that's good enough for today. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll back up to June 1st uh, county board meeting and then we did hold a workshop after that meeting. Uh, the following day, June 2nd, we did have a hearing on uh, County Ditch 63 um, here at the Government Center. And on Thursday, uh, we, um, we also uh, had another informational meeting um, concerning uh, County Ditch 5, 13, and 29, which we'll probably hear a little bit more about uh, at this meeting today. And that afternoon, uh, participate in the American Rescue Plan uh, informational meeting that, uh, that Sheila hosted at the uh, fairgrounds in Hutchinson. Uh, and then the following week, uh, Commissioner Kruger already mentioned that uh, uh, District 7 uh, AMC had a meeting in New Ulm. And um, I didn't want to uh, leave Barrett out. Barrett was in attendance as well, along with Sheila and Commissioner Kruger and myself. On Friday the 11th, I had a Zoom meeting um, with the Central Minnesota Jobs and Training Services. On the 14th of June, I had the opportunity to uh, hook up with Adam in our soil and water department and we tried to do a tour on uh, CD5. Um, we, uh, it was with Four Wheeler uh, and I will admit that we couldn't see it all. We can't get through it, so it kind of uh, shows us that we do have issues out there that we need to address and we've got to start somewhere and again we'll uh, we'll be discussing that uh, later in this meeting. 15th we had our regular board meeting in the afternoon and Board of Appeal uh, along with uh, that uh, meeting series uh, that went uh, into the evening hours. June 17th, I had a Pioneer Land Library meeting, uh, which I attended by Zoom. June 22nd, uh, Tuesday, we had Health and Human Services Committee meeting, uh, also attended by Zoom. June 24th, um, I met with uh, one of the uh, uh, landowners along uh, CD5 uh, to discuss uh, some of the issues that uh, we're looking at uh, uh, doing on, on that JIT system. And uh, then uh, in, uh, later on in the afternoon, I had a UCAP meeting, United Community Action Group, uh, that I attended uh, by Zoom. 
um, the 28th of June, um, uh, just uh, took a call uh, to discuss another county ditch issue um, lying uh, you know, within District 1. The 30th of June, I did an on-site meeting with a landowner that has a uh, private culvert crossing on County Road 1. And um, I guess that's all I have, Mr. Chair. I guess for the next uh, 10 minutes, you'll have to fill in the rest of the time. <laughs> I want to apologize to, to Barrett that I missed her. I remembered you on MMC <laughs> DC, but uh, she's very involved in, in different things, and that's really good to get that department uh, with us, and 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 they we can compare the different challenges that we all have to face. So it's it's really good to see her active. Um, Sheila, on on administration, do you want to? Uh, we've got uh, we've, we've got a few minutes. I just want to add one quick update. I want to um, thank the team from SWCD that reports to Ryan Price Hag. They held an event over lunch last week for the employees of the government center, and they just do a very good job um, supporting employee morale in the building. So, thank you to the commissioners who stopped by it as well. I had that in capital letters, and I still forgot it. it was <laughs> It was very good. It, it's the first one in the big. In, in here, uh, there was well attended, and I, I guess you can say a good, bad, or indifferent about it, but it's really nice to get employees laughing and giggling a little bit amongst themselves, so it, it, it helps that way, and, and Ryan did a great job of, of frying, so. Uh, well, I think it says Adam, a lot when people Adam. are willing to give a few dollars to spend their own lunch hour with people they work with, so yeah, those guys do a good job of that. Thank, thank you to you. them, and also to Hannah for helping out. Item A, um, we have McLeod treatment programs here today. We're considering acceptance of a monetary donation from McLeod treatment program. Um, Sue and Phyllis are here today. So McLe McLeod treatment program is a residential care facility based in Hutchinson, Minnesota. It was founded in 1976. And unfortunately, they ceased operations earlier this year and in turn liquidated their assets. As a result, they would like to donate to McLeod County in return for their years of support to the organization. So we'll just have you two go ahead up to the mic. We actually have some board members oh, here. Oh, yeah, that'd be great if all of you, um, if anyone wants to say anything to Do you want to just make sure that microphone is green? It should be. <laughs> Do what? I'm sorry. The microphone should be on. So. Is it on is it green? green? There's a little light right <laughs> at this. Uh, you have experience with this. <laughs> is it yeah. green? Okay. Uh, well, thanks for the opportunity to, to speak in front of the board. I, we do appreciate it. And, and as was stated by Sheila, we do certainly appreciate from the last 45 years of support, dare I say, partnership with the county um, that was able to provide a service to young men and women who really, without this type of program, really would have fallen through the cracks. And not to get into a long-winded speech, but my concern moving forward as we close our doors, uh, the concern is the long-range impact on these young men and women who really have benefited over the years from, from this organization's support for showing them the way that they can be productive members of the society um, and, and really to help them turn their life around. So the concern long range obviously is what happens with these young men and women in the future. And I think um, it'll, it'll be tough to put our finger on, but we will see that impact um, as a society moving forward. So that being said, um, I do appreciate the years of service being a, a board member. We certainly realize um, the impact and the support you guys have provided this program. Um, and we won't get into all the reasons why um, that, that we have faced this issue today, um, most of it out of anyone's control, but that is what it is. So with that, I'll let Sue talk about um, the donation to the county and, and the appreciation. Thank you. Sue, would you mind just um, notifying everyone who's all here from your board just to recognize sure. them? Sure. Um, that was Dan Hatton. He's on our board of directors. Steve Alcott. Bill Arndt, Ron Shemansky, and then Phyllis was executive secretary, and then myself, the executive director. So, 
or former, I guess we would say at this point. So, um, but yes, it's been a great partnership we've had with McLeod County over the years. Um, some of you have actually sat on our board throughout the years. Um, we've utilized space in the McLeod County building over there and we've really appreciated that. Um, so I think it's definitely been a partnership like Dan said, it wasn't adversarial in any way, you know, so we definitely appreciate that. Um, and we do have a donation of $30,000 that we would like to give to McLeod County to use in whatever way you guys see fit. Um, there is going to be another donation that will come probably mid next year. Um, we just have to make sure that some of our, you know, taxes and all that kind of stuff gets paid, but there will be a smaller donation that'll be made next year as well. Um, but we just wanted to say thank you and wish you all the best and hopefully going forward that, uh, um, the children and family needs of the community are met. So that's what we want to see happen. Mr. Thank Chair. Go ahead. Sue, thank you. Um, we're always in the habit of taking money because we spend quite a bit there. Um, but we'd rather have your doors open and we're sorry that this happened, but thank you. I got the opportunity to sit on that board and it was a great experience. So thank you and <coughs> so you know McLeod County's always hiring if you're looking for something. So. I do try. <laughs> <laughs> so who would like the track? Well, can and we I, get a photo with you with the board real quick with your sure. board? I would just like to I also comment. I, I thank you for, for all the work I did not sit on the board, but I know how important it is and I, I still agree with you and I don't know what the politics are and we're not going to go there, but I, I hope you're not all strangers, uh, people that are participating and, and if something that does work comes along, because uh, I, I one of them necessary evils that we need to we need to address and and, and I appreciate your work two Thank two you. things mr. chair number one we ought to know the exact amount of the check is it 30,000 30, yeah 30,000 and number two there should be a, a resolution of the board that accepts the the donation do you need a resolution or is a simple I'll motion here today a motion is fine all right I I move to accept the donation motion made by Commissioner Nagel to accept the $30,000 donation um, from McLeod Treatment Programs. Uh, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Wright. Is there any more discussion on, on the motion? Mr. Yes. Chair, I just want to note that we're doing the motion for this meeting and then at the annual meeting where we accept donations, it will be added to that. So you'll see it listed in January as well. That's right. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. And I want to as well um, congratulate you and your service uh, to run the program and uh, thank you you know, for what you've done. And I'll put a plug in there too, Mr. Chair. I did have the honor uh, to serve on their board for a few years. And uh, I think uh, the public should be uh, aware of, of uh, you know, that dedication from various board members, but two individuals of Sue Devereaux and Phyllis Cripps. Uh, your dedication to your program is absolutely impressive. And uh, from here, uh, you made a difference in a lot of people's lives. Um, and so you should be very, very proud of that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We got a vote. Have you voted on the motion? Nope. No. Any, are, any more discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, we will proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Now. <laughs> Just stay up. Sheila, you want us up here? And then yeah. And we stay here? <laughs> You know, Joe, you actually get to look down on Dan this time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you <get> again. <laughs> Stop picking fights. I will go ahead if that's okay with item B to give you two minutes. Sure. Okay. Item B under county administration, consider approval of the modified contract be between Minnesota State Retirement System, MSRS, and McLeod County's Law Enforcement Labor Services, LELS Licensed Sergeants Union. The modified contract allows members to deposit funds into their health care savings plan, HCSP, upon termination of employment or retirement. This modification presents no financial imp impact to McLeod County. They require a signature in order to make any changes. There is no impact on us by doing this. It's just a formality for them to make a change of how they um, contribute to their accounts. Thank you.
I need to think we got to approve this. Yep. So I would move to approve item B under administration. And second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the modification in the contract to the retirement MSRS. Um, is there any more discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, public hearing, Connie. The, the public hearing is for CD 63. Mr. Chair, move to open the public hearing. Motion made by Commissioner Nagel to open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Wright. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of opening the, the hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Hearing's open. All right, Connie. Okay, Mike, purpose of the hearing? The purpose of the hearing is to review the fees that are going to be charged by Houston in Engineering for monitoring the contract for the repair of County Ditch 63. Now, Connie, that's the 124,000 estimate, correct? So the 124,000 includes the amounts that's already paid to date of 88,665. We're going to be approving the additional 36. So it's the additional $35,690.05? Task seven, correct. Yep. So just some history for the board again to recap um, on, let's see. As a reminder, the initial is estimate for the services at the informal landowner meeting was $36,523. On June 11th, HEI returned with a quote in the amount of 65,000 and then the board tabled it at that time to have um, discussion and review again with HEI. And now they've come back with a contract which includes an additional $35,690.05, that's listed in task seven, and then with an amount not to exceed $124,000 without prior approval. So that would be the <coughs> total amount paid to date plus the task seven. So are they going back to what they're pretty close to what their uh, original estimate was? Yes, very, very close. And then just so the board would understand um, that SWCD would also be handling most of the construction management staking and observation. And that is due to our um, JPA joint powers agreement with SWCD. And then just so the board and everyone realizes, along with that agreement, we would get some time billed from SWCD, but will more than likely not total what the HEI contract was. Thank you, Connie. Well, I'm, um, from, from the experience I have had, our guys are spending time on the projects anyway, so we were doubling up. I, I mean, I realize that this, there's going to be a little extra cost from the money we're talking right now, but they're on they're on the job anyway. And I and I'm to be honest with you, they know the projects, and I I'm happy with that. Yes, that is correct. So, any questions for me or SWCD? They are on board with the contract. Um, are we? Mike, do we take any public comment before we do this? I yes. Would, uh, just so I'll, I'll Did you make a motion to open the public hearing? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, did. Uh, so is there, any, uh, is there any public comment from what you've heard so far on, on CD63? Hearing none, um, all right, we'll go back to the, to the or information that we received. So Mr. Chair, we, we had tabled it because the price tag was significantly higher uh, than what we originally uh, talked about with when many of the landowners were here. Since that time has already been mentioned, uh, they uh, uh, found a much uh, fairer way uh, to, to get the costs in line with what they stated that day and then be incorporating staff from SWCD. And so seeing that we're in line, I think a motion is in order to approve uh, that contract then. So I'll make that motion. Motion's been made by Commissioner Wright to approve the contract with Houston Engineering. Um, is, there, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Luthens. And that uh, motion spe specifically should include the page one task, seven expenses of $35,690.05, 
and the total compensation re revised to 124,000, not to exceed without prior approval. Do we need to read that in, or is that is that sufficient? That's okay with the motion maker yep. and second. That's fine. Yep. That can be included. All right, I'm fine with that. Is there any more discussion? Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Just a question to our soil and water uh, department. Are, after review upon uh, you know their revised numbers, are you comfortable with the uh, action now that's being proposed? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any more discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, is there any other items due to or with CD 63 that need to come forward to board today? No, Mr. Chair. Um, do we, can we adjourn or recess, Mike? Adjourn. Adjourn. I'll take a motion to adjourn as an order. Move to adjourn. Motion the public by, hearing. Motion <laughs> made by Commissioner Nagel to adjourn the public hearing. All, is there a second? Second. Uh, seconded by Commissioner Wright. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of adjourning the public hearing for 63, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned. My luck, everyone that got up. Just me. Doug's gone. What happens? Good catch, though. Um, all right, we're going to go into um, a, a ditches 5, 13, and 29. Yes, so the second item that I am here for today is to consider approval to complete County Ditches 5, 13, and 29 historic review reports by Houston Engineering out of Maple Grove, Minnesota. So there was an informal meeting held on June 3rd, 2021 for those systems. Presented to the landowners in attendance were options for engineering services to determine the status of each drainage system. The majority of the landowners in attendance voted to move forward with the completion of historic review reports. In accordance with 103E.101 subdivision 4A, the drainage authority, this board, may order historic review reports. The estimated costs of the historic review reports for these drainage systems are as follows. CD5, 23,100. CD13, 23,200. CD29, 21,600. Um, and that would be for the total of 67,900. So as you know, um, historic review reports will, will be completed to describe the as constructed and subsequ subsequently approved condition, which can serve as the basis for consideration of an order to correct the public drainage system record at a public hearing. Any questions for me on the process? I just, ha I do have one for Mike. Do we have, can we do that as a drainage authority? Do we have to do something different here? No, you can do it. You are the, the drainage authority, yep. yes. Okay. Um, and, and, and I would note that those numbers are the same that are on the contract with the exception that five and 13 are switched in their order. So if you're looking at that saying, well, one says 23,200 when it should be 23,100, she has it right. It's just that they're switched in their order in the contract. So in, 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 the con, in her presentation, it went 5, 13, 29, and in the contract, it goes 13, 5, 29. Okay, my only comment, and, and I mean, you can chime in if you want, Connie, but I, I mean, it's a necessary, I don't like the cost of engineering, uh, uh, but it, it's hard, it's hard to do work today without getting a, an as-built or, or even getting an engineer's report on a specific project, so I, it's just one of those necessary evils that I, I, I have no idea what to do other than that. Nothing's not an option. That is correct. Typically, this is our first step and then possibly would move up forward with a repair report, but that's at a later date. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Um, the majority of, of the ditch system of 5, 13, and 29 falls within my district, and I've taken several calls, and we spent time uh, you know, kind of looking through our options. And I think uh, I understand that not everyone can come to the meetings as they're posted, but um, there'll never be a good time for, for the majority of the people. Um, I think we took the um, proper uh, steps to get to this point. 
Uh, the message that I try to share with the people I represent is, you know, that we do have an obligation to maintain our ditch systems uh, by state statute. And, um, and I think uh, we have to remind each other of that. We also have to remind each other that we need to be attending the, the meetings as they're posted. Um, and that's, that's where decisions are made. So uh, with that information, I, I understand the issue. Uh, people don't want to pay more. Um, and I'm sensitive to that issue as well. But without the engineering studies to start, uh, we have nothing to go by. So uh, I would move uh, that we approve the uh, Houston uh, Historical Review uh, as proposed. Okay, a motion has been made by Commissioner Smalls to approve the CD5, CD13, CD29 um, authorization of a as built. Um, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Wright. Uh, is there any more discussion on it? Again, I, I'm going to repeat myself, but it's it's a it's just necessary. I, I, well, there's no way. I mean, I listen to the meetings. One thinks it's high over here. One thinks this needs to be done, and and the perception is all great, but we don't know. So, um, with that, any more discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Say aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I do have one more question for you, Connie. Is there, are, are we going to proceed with the, the, the work that we have started on 63 now? I mean, we, we had that, uh, that um, or I mean, not 63, on, on 5, 13, and 29. We had some work started, and there were some, some options with, some, with the, with the uh, proposed bids. Is, is, everything on the, is everything moving forward? Adam, would you like to speak to that? Ah, caught him. Well, I'm just going to get calls on it anyway. I mean, obviously, we had a bid that we, we, we had a knowledge to take. I mean, to be totally honest, and the bidder backed out. Are we going to move forward with the second with the second bidder? That is process, in my opinion. Are you speaking of the trees on CD5? I am. Correct, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess the, the first bidder had pulled um, the bid, and uh, the second bidder would be next in line. Um, to handle the, basically the tree and brush removal out there on CD5 and uh, CD13. So, and, that, and I that's think we process. Go, I think we should go ahead and get that out of the way um, this fall, winter time. And then by that time, we should have a historic review back and, and proceed with the repair report. And I agree with you, Adam, but is there, Connie, is there a process? Is it just, is it done? Is the process good so we can? So we can lock in the. I, I don't. It's not. It's not beneficial to go back and rebid. And the bids were everything was done right. If the bids were all good, and and obviously if the one bidder doesn't take it, you move it. Just move down to the second one. Correct. Yes. I mean that's. I guess moving forward, that's the route uh, we should take as a, you know as you should take as a board um, to consider that to move on to second bidder. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, to comment on, on uh, the topic of the tree removal on CD5. Um, uh, one of the discussions I had uh, with uh, the landowners was that, uh, you know, uh, I indicated to him that I would support the Houston study uh, at today's meeting. But at the same time, the discussion led to, okay, maybe we should uh, uh, not proceed with the tree expense and spread that out into the following year if we could. So I, I want to, you know, uh, use that as a, a cautionary as far as putting putting this all on them, you know, at one meeting. Uh, so I guess what I'm saying is I'd rather um, that we look at tree removal uh, the following year. <clears throat> I, the only thing I have, and somebody has to explain it to me, and then we have, we already started to, to, no, I don't mean that way, but when we put it out for bids, that's what we put it out for. So do we have to then turn around and stop? I, I the po costs are going to get higher. That's that's what really bothers me the most. Right, and I think you know the costs are going to be on next year's um, assessments, anyways. Um, of, you know, for for assessment wise, um, to do the project now, um, it's going to be out next year's assessments. Um, 
I guess I would, I would like to see the project done here this fall and winter so by next spring we could, you know, go on with a repair. Yeah, next otherwise it's going to be another year after exactly. that. Exactly. And it mm -hmm. works better for tree removal sometimes, you know, a little colder out, it just works better. Mr. Chair, if I may. <laughs> so, uh, appreciating Commissioner Schmalz's comments, uh, to, to monitor those bills, but we can we can toggle that into this fall when we do the ditch assessments for the payments correct time, excuse me, time, um, uh, instead of, you know, perhaps one year we can spread it out to two or three so we still get the project taken care of. Uh, but when we when we uh, do those, uh, those ditch, ditch project payment structures, we can, we can adjust that. Uh, Mr. Chair and Paul, are you speaking of just spreading out uh, the repayment schedule mm -hmm. over the two or three years? Or yeah. and I don't know where the balance is on that on that ditch right now. But instead of w instead of one year, we could go two or three, um, and then at least the project is done. Now we're doing a clean out, or what? What is the scope of the project from here then? Yeah, after tree removal, like I was kind of mentioning, um, to do a tree removal and then next spring summer to do a clean out and see what the repair report tells us to do and kind of go from there. And we could possibly, I don't know, I've talked to Connie, but if we put the tree removal and the whole as a, as a bigger project on one assessment, you know, we can, you know, do, a, do the repair report trees and everything else on one assessment instead of having it separate, if that's an option. So I believe that's, what was on 63 is that we did the trees and that was still on the repair report as a whole um, repair. Yeah. I, you know, this, this area has been a, an issue. Um, I don't need to explore, you know, that tree area is also supposed to be a high area. I mean, the way to, to go this far I mean, I, I, I think we can work if, if it's the payments that are concerned, I think we can we can work with them. But I, I think it, that's that's something that's going to have to be done. It's not an option to do or not to do, in my opinion. Are, are you following me, Commissioner? Yeah, the follow-up comment I'd have would be, is it more feasible to do it now this year and add another uh, expense, or should we wait for the repair? Uh, potential repair report to come in and then look at uh, where the money would be spent. I guess I guess my opinion would be to do the tree removal um, the, this fall into winter. That'd be my opinion, so we can move forward with repair report next spring and summer. I think, in my experience, I'd agree with that. Then our contractors can can go through there easier and make a better bidding process out of out of the cleanup if all the debris is out of their way. We don't have two different contractor crews trying to go in there at the same time during that cleanout period. Um, it's just going to make your entrance into that repair or that cleanout uh, a lot cleaner in many different ways if the trees and, and debris are out of that working zone. And it's helped us find like, well, for lack of a better term, errors on the contractor part before too, where they needed to get things fixed before the repair report. Yeah, and then we, we went through on kind of 64 and did tree removal first, and that was the first thing to do there. And also 63, we went through and did tree removal, and then we did the repairs, and it seemed to follow the process. And it, it worked out, it's working out well to do that process. So with that information, Mr. Chair, I'm comfortable with the process being it was uh, previously tested, you know, with other ditch systems. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that our uh, that uh, that our we're we're kind of addressing the concerns that uh, that uh, we have out there on our our landowners. Very good to bring those forward. So where are we at? Are we supposed to be um, looking at uh, uh, approving the tree rule on? I think it's I think it's the right way to do it. Being um, we approved a, a bid that backed out, so I, I I don't know if it just clears the air. It's maybe a Mike question. Uh, you know, do you do you understand what happened, Mike? Did you get the information? No, no, I didn't. Uh, okay. If you're going to approve something, you ought to have some kind of a cost estimate and say it, that will will result uh, tree removal up to X number of dollars. So we do have that. So Adam just did clarify this was a quote, not a, quote. a bid. Mm -hmm. 
that did not go through What's the bidding the process. Um, is, the, the amount of the quotes was roughly, uh, I don't know, um, it was roughly around 50,000. Um, I don't have exact numbers in front of me. Um, <coughs> I'd have to get back to you on the exact numbers. Well, you're not getting back to me. You're getting back to 50. Right, I have the numbers too, and I don't have them on me, or, or I don't have them right now. Your but the, the experience, what happened there, Mike, was we we accepted a bid in that open, in that public meeting we had, that informational meeting. With the consensus was to take the bid. Well, the bidder, shortly after the meeting, backed out. So that there was only one other bid, and my thought was that that's the right process mm -hmm. to pick up that second bid. Then, and we have the authority to do that, do we not? Yes, you. Yeah, yeah, you do. But but if you agree to it then you ought to have, you ought to put a, a, a not to exceed dollar amount, and whether it's 50 or 55,000, I don't care. But you ought to know what you're committing to so that, that the contractor and everybody involved know, knows what they're committing to. Adam, <coughs> Adam uh, we're waiting two weeks until the next meeting so that we can clear this up a little bit. Will that hinder the, the project at all? Or? No, no, we could wait two weeks and okay, so come I, back and I, uh, just for, Sorry. I, think I think that would probably be uh, the wisest thing to do is to just wait the two weeks until our July 20th board meeting and look at that tree cleaning so we have the accurate numbers on there. We're, sounds like we're kind of guessing here today. So, Plus I maybe think. the advantage with uh, holding on the two weeks would make sure that we're making it on our, on our agenda as well. Yeah, correct. There's no problem with doing that that way. We can do it two weeks and that's yeah. probably... It's okay. It doesn't I, interfere with the contractor. And no, I don't, I don't think so. about all the figures. And I think it's all right okay. with you. I'm yep. all right with us. <coughs> I'm okay with that. That's fine. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Information technology, Matt. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, here to request consider approval of master services agreement with Exigent Solutions of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and authorizing myself, Matt Traska, IT manager, to approve individual statements of work in amounts up to $5,000. Exigent Solutions supports a number of systems used by McLeod County, and this agreement defines the terms for professional services engagements. County Attorney Mike Young has reviewed this agreement. Board, I have moved to approve the services agreement. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Wright, seconded by Commissioner Nagel to approve these services. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of approving the, uh, the, the agreement with uh, Exigent Solutions for $5,000, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Hannah, employee relations. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just have one uh, item today. Um, asking the board to consider approval for the personnel committee's recommendation to hire one full-time government center receptionist to grade 110. If you remember in February 16, 2021 at the board meeting, we uh, the part-time government center receptionist grade 110 was approved. Since that time, we've been working to successfully staff two part-time receptionists um, and have not yet been successful. Um, we're hoping that by creating a full-time benefits eligible position that we'll find a more permanent fit. Um, additionally, we've determined that this role will be supervised by the auditor treasurer's office rather than administration. We've learned a lot in these last few months and this position is spends the majority of its time assisting, greeting and directing um, folks that are utilizing the government, uh, utilizing the license center. Um, the budget impact will just be the benefit, so it'll be ranging between the uh, $2,820 to $15,600, depending on the benefit selected by this employee. And Sheila maybe has uh, some additional comments as well. I, I don't. I would just note that uh, your, your, your license center here is drawing an awful lot of people from outside of McLeod County. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you're, but you're drawing them from, from Minneapolis and 50, yep. 70 miles surrounding because yeah. they have to wait so, so long at their own. Yeah, I, I will add, actually, with, um, with Mike having said that, 
I had some notes sent to me or text messages over the weekend about our license center again. And I want to say that Connie and Janet's job, Connie and Janet's team is doing a phenomenal job. Most of the time you see the flow going through. There is not a buildup of people in there. There's not a waiting line. The complaints we see on social media and um, other spots are typically that person that came in on Friday afternoon and they think they can come at three and get out of there right away. Well, if someone in front of you is getting a real ID, that's a huge impact that has been on the license center that we're, we're seeing it. Um, they've gotten new staff added to their team. They're staffed and they're, and they're doing a good job training them and helping people out. So we're, we're seeing it. We go up there multiple times a day. And um, there are, along with the 72 comments that I read in the post that was brought to my attention, I would say at least 80% of them were saying, hey, they are doing a good job. You just need to be patient. And hey, I got helped really quickly. I was out of there in 10 minutes. So thank you to the Thank you to them, and then this will be even more helpful with that. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chair, the uh, personnel committee, which you're on, but we we worked this over pretty good <laughs> and to see what the best fit was, and we went with the two part-time deal uh, deal, two part-time staff members, and it didn't uh, quite work like we wanted it to. Um, this puts a little bit more burden on the auditor treasurer's office to staff it when this full-time person wouldn't be there, but they were agreeable to that. And if anybody walked through the lobby this morning, and I did, it was busy. Um, it was very busy. Um, and our staff was working hard to get people moved through, and I, there's probably some frustrations out there, but I mean, that's just, I don't know what to say about that. Um, but I think this will, especially if we find the right person, which I'm confident we will, will um, alleviate some of that stress on people. And, and it's a bit of an education process too. It's, it's everywhere. and. Mr. Young is right. We're getting a lot of uh, business from outside of McLeod County, and that's fine. It's just, but we need to, you know, continue to uh, address our customer service needs, and, and that'll help. And this will help with that, I feel. Well, the irony of it is it's because they aren't getting service in right. their home, home areas. Right. So they're coming here. And, yeah. and I've, I, I've talked with several folks who are coming out of Minneapolis yeah. to come out here. Yeah, and they, and they said, I have a a gentleman who worked for me in Hutchinson and he since left to go to Wyzetta. He came back out here for that very reason. So anyway, with that, I'll uh, move to approve the request. Motion's been made to approve the request. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Wright. Uh, any discussion? I'll just add in there, uh, uh, over the past many years, many places have phased out receptionists and uh, and we're, we're putting a full time uh, in or proposing to uh, just, I think it just adds on to uh, the service that we believe that we want to bring on to others, which is the design of this whole building in the first place. And so I think that that's, that's good for us. Um, the other, other comment, I've watched um, many different people fill that role out there, and I definitely like the ones that are uh, on their feet and greeting people and, and you know, trying to find where, you know, what, what do they need uh, uh, versus uh, perhaps sitting behind the desk waiting to see if there's somebody would approach him for a question. So I definitely like that more aggressive receptionist type of approach, so. That would be my comment as well. I, um, I've been watching it and, and my calls vary. Uh, um, one day I, I get called that it's a great, great place. It just couldn't be better. And the next day, same people, same everything. Oh, it's terrible, you know, <laughs> so we go. So, but I do know that the receptionists, uh, from the people I've talked to, it makes people a lot easier to direct them. I, I seen the way you aligned it with, uh, with the auditor's office. I, if Connie is good with that, and it sounded like, like she was, um, I, I, th I think it's a really good idea. You could really tell. We tried the part time. We we had different ones. Um, uh, dedicate, say dedication. Say you know they weren't what the job really needed. Some are just, just great, some not so good. So I think <laughs> this is a chance for us to uh, put somebody in there that really fits. Mr. Chair, I'm just gonna add one more thing before we end. Some of the people who have helped us out with this part-time job up front have been treated very poorly by the public. Mm -hmm. Sworn at, yelled at, and just treated very poorly. And that is why a couple of those part-time people just weren't cut out for it because they weren't expecting to be treated that way. Um, Hannah. Connie, all of them have done a really good job of addressing that when it comes up. Um, we're actually going to do some de-escalation training for our staff to make sure that if this keeps happening in our building that they're equipped to handle those situations. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I would say the majority of the people that visit our building are fantastic and understanding and kind. Some are not, and those situations can really change um, employment for a person. So this will hopefully help us find the right person who can be here full time. We have other staff to fill in as needed. Thank you to all of you for your work on this, and thank you for the board support. Any more discussion? Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Uh, I was uh, shocked, and with the, with the news, I never knew that that's happened, and it, um, it shouldn't. I mean, we're, we're trying to provide a service to our, our citizens, and uh, people have to be understanding of that. But the, the comment I wanted to make was it's not just, you know, for the counter service at the licensing center. <coughs> it's, um, you know, as Health and Human Services starts bringing more people in, uh, I suppose there'll be more foot traffic, traffic involved with that. So uh, it, it should help out, uh, you know, with what's going on upstairs as well as what uh, we have downstairs. So uh, with that, I will be in favor of the motion. I, w I, I would just add one more thing. <coughs> that de-escalation that you're talking about, that, that, that wouldn't be a bad thing to offer it throughout the county. I, I have given my people per permission that, that if somebody swear, swears at them, you ask them to stop and then, and then you get to hang up. Mm -hmm. But I've had people who have been calling the nicest person in the world who's in my office <laughs> a, the, the B word. And it just astounds me that that can happen. All of our employees will be offered the training. We're working with MCIT and Kevin Matthews is helping us arrange that. And along with that one more comment, and it's taken some work for my, me as well over, over years, not the last couple, I'm, I think I'm getting better at it. You don't shoot the messenger. I mean, it's not fair. I, I've been in there and I've talked to some people just because you don't like what's going on, you know, it's not, we're, we're trying to do our jobs, they're trying to do their jobs, they're trying to do it the best they can. Unfortunately, you gotta play the hand you're dealt and that's what they have, so I agree. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, one last note. Um, this is a pa pandemic re related thing and we're, we're gonna be dealing with the results of the pandemic for the next two to four years. And uh, at the court system, their, their goal is to get back to pre-pandemic levels by the middle of 23. And if they get there, it'll be, it'd be amazing. But uh, just to say that this, the, the pandemic being somewhat in control now, it's not over. And, and, and the mental health issues that it raised, the chemical dependency issues it raised, the suicides, the ODs, all of that stuff is a continuing problem. I am. Um yeah, along with that, I, I mean, I, it's, I have relation <coughs> and, and a daughter in the cities. I mean, the word in, it's in Carver County, unfortunately, the better we get, the more people that are coming to go to, go to McLeod County. They got it that works good for them compared to anything they, they have, so. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. I believe we're, we we're to the end of the meeting. I didn't miss anything, did I? Nope. Open forum. Anyone have anything for the good of the cause? Go ahead, Mr. Schmansky. You want your chair back? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Are you willing to give it up? <laughs> you gotta move. <laughs> no. uh, it's just great to be here in the new government center. This is my first board meeting that I've been back to. And uh, as we went through the meeting, I just had to keep biting my tongue instead of voting aye. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the, as far as the receptionist goes, I mean, that is the first impression that people have when they come into the government center. So an excellent receptionist is going to go a long way uh, to uh, define the impression that people have of what's happening here in McLeod County. So um, I think uh, that's all we need to say today, but uh, it's good to see you all this you morning. So. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Ron. Thanks. Welcome back. I just want to say that um, a number of our Health and Human Services uh, staff are back in the office today and excited about that and just want to uh, thank Matt and IT and Ryan and the soil and water team. Um, they're helping hook up monitors and get computers and phones hooked up today so everyone can start working. So thank you very much for all your help. This is working really good so far. Is there any... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, I just want to take a moment.
moment to recognize Andrea Matheny is our new HR generalist uh, for the county. Um, she started just a couple of weeks ago. This is her third week. Um, you'll be seeing more of her, and she attended the meeting today to kind of get a feel for the board. Um, we're really excited to have Andrea on board. She's from Brownton, um, has a family there, and um, already adding a lot to our team in these first three weeks. Welcome, well, Andrea. Well, welcome. Anything else? Uh, press relations. Karen? Nothing? Tell us how good we're doing today. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank nice. you, Karen. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I move to recess. Motion's been made by Commissioner Nagel to recess. Is Are you recessing two, two? And what is the purpose? I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll read it if you want me to. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Motion's been made to recess until July 20th, 2021, at 9 a.m. at the McLeod County Government Center, 520 Chandler Avenue North in Glencoe. In other words, right here. Mr. Chair, we doing you don't want to do anything about the highway. I'm your role. Yeah. Oh, that's correct. Thank you, Mike. So um, I could just, we have a workshop today regarding some high, some road projects that we may have to have formal see. board action on. So um, so I should have been more complete in my motion. So if I may. Go ahead. I would. Uh, Let's uh, just start over on the. Move to recess until Friday. Um, help me. July, July 9th at 1 p.m. here in the McLeod County Boardroom. And the possible item that will be on the the possible item that will be on the board agenda would would be to discuss the Morningside project and any possible changes that might be made if after the workshop. No, no changes are deemed to be necessary or nothing is going to be accomplished, that special or that meeting on Friday could be canceled. Thank you. In, in which case the next board meeting would be on the date that, that Commissioner Kruger had, had mentioned. Was that July 21st? 20th. July 20th. July 20th. All right, let's see if I can get through this. A, a motion's been made to recess <laughs> until July 9th. Mr. Uh, Chair, I'm sorry, I have to stop you for a second. Because we're not sure, did you vote on number 11? Or do you need to? Well, we have this. And before you recess, sorry, Commissioner. Well, Item we, A. <coughs> yeah, we approved that. Are you sure? Yes. Did we vote? Do we vote? Do you we have got a little sidetracked with the tree cleaning thing all at the same right. time. And I don't know. Oh, it's possible. Thank you. With the okay. motion, we but the vote. All right, so how do we put this all back together? <laughs> okay, it's better to have it done twice than to have it <laughs> not done at all. So item number 11, or uh, which one is the item? Number 11. Number 11. Let's just go back and, and just, just to make sure without having to go back through the tape, but we, the, I know we did get sidetracked on the, I thought we cleaned it up though, but if not, uh, the, the motion would have been, uh, I'll let, I'll let Commissioner Smalls yeah. rephrase his motion and we'll go from there. Did you make sure it's recorded, Jordan? Thank you. We're backing up to <coughs> item 11, 11. Uh, discussion of the, uh, of, uh, the historic. CD 5, order. 13, and 29. Motion was for the, um, to move forward with the uh, historic review uh, with Houston Engineering on CD 5, CD 13, and CD 29 in I believe the estimated amount being $67,900. Motion has been made by Commissioner Smalls. Is there a second? I'll second that again. Se seconded by Commissioner Wright to approve the as built for, for CD 5, 13 and 29 for a total cost of $67,900. All in favor, any, any more discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Thank you. I vaguely remember saying that once, but it could be a mistake. All right. So I'll restate, that's fine. I'll restate the motion to recess till July 9th at 1 p.m. in reference to the Morningside Road Project. 
and you want to put a, a asterisk on there that if the meeting's canceled, the next meeting will be on July 20th, 2021 at 9 a.m. here. That's fine with me. Thank Second. You. Seconded by Commissioner Luthens. Any clarifications needed or any questions of Karen? Did you get that part of it? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're recessed.